Glory to the Lord. Glory to the great I am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. Praise your holy, divine, and righteous name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To the living God. Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining. I appreciate you for coming in. Blessings to you. Blessings to you as you come in. Please share, please share, please share as you come in. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Can you greet me as you come in? Say hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Can you hear me? Can you give me a thumbs up? Let me know you can hear me. Praise the Lord. Live from Ghana. God bless you, Brother Samuel. I appreciate you for being with me every week. It's so good to see you. The Lord bless you and continue to rest on your family. Um, I don't know if you ever got a chance to see that uh, prayer that I prayed for you, Brother Samuel. I've been looking for you to come back to me and let me know um, a confirmation on some things that we can pray in a specific direction. God bless you, cousin. Sister Tashel, that's my cousin, y'all. It's you've been friend. I've been friends with you for so long, and um, years later to find out that we are actually relatives. That's why you gotta know who your folks are. So God bless you, Sister Tashel. It's good to see you tonight, Sister Rotisha. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate the thumbs up and letting me know that you can hear me loud and clear. This is the day the Lord has made, and I am going to rejoice. Do I have any fellow brothers and sisters who can rejoice in the great I am? Hallelujah. In the Prince of Peace, the God of your life, that you know that the great I am is the Lord of your life. Hallelujah. And we give him praise for that. We give him glory for that in Jesus name as you come in on the broadcast can you share can you share can you share can you share there should be a arrow on your computer on your tablet on your iPhone on your Android that points for you in a direction for you to share 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 and as you come in I want you to pray I want you to plead the blood of Jesus I have some situations going on and I'm waiting on um, the maintenance team to show up. So I want, I want y'all to pray. I be asking y'all to pray for me and I'm not playing. When I say pray, pray, please pray for your sister. I'm in need of your prayer. And uh, today um, I dance and celebrate the Lord for um, him just covering us and keeping us even when danger is present and you don't know danger is present, he's keeping you. Things have been going on in your body and you don't know things have been going on in your body. But the great I am, the miracle worker himself has been in your midst. He's had angels. He's had the work of the Holy Spirit in your midst keeping you, healing you, and you don't even know. Breakthrough, and you don't even know. Uh, signs and wonders, and you don't even know. There are so many things that are happening in the spirit realm. And when we say that type of stuff, we think of the average person thinks of demonic powers, but not only are there demonic powers, but there are angels. The Bible says in Psalms 103 that um, the angels hearken in strength or they or they excel rather in strength. They are hearkening to the voice of God's word. His word says grace and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Psalms 91 says that he's given his angels charge over you to keep you. 
Hallelujah. And all your ways, lest you dash your foot against the stone. So the only reason why um, there are some things, you don't have to wait till you survive an accident or your car get dented and beat up and flip over. We thank God for the signs that say uh, uh, God was with you. But I praise God today for the things that I didn't have to see. Old people used to say danger seen and unseen. You think because you don't see it, it is not presence. Hallelujah. But I thank God for eyes in the spirit that I don't have to see it with my natural eye. Um, y'all don't know this because y'all too young, maybe some of y'all. But uh, when I was coming along, the, the missionaries used to teach us about the discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. with an S on the end. Um, yeah, it's not cleanse now. It's not clean now. It's not clean teaching now. It's not the kind of teaching that would teach you now that you don't trust what you see. You trust the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is telling you that danger is present, no matter how hard, how calm it is. I have been in the present in this in this very place where I, I live. I've been, in a, and I've been in the place and the Holy Ghost says it's a gas leak called the gas company and the, I mean, you don't smell it, but the Holy Ghost said it. So you obey, you obey, you obey. I'm just getting started. Give me your reason to praise the Lord. You obey, call the gas company, the gas company test and say, I don't smell it. But according to the test, it's a leak, right? A Holy Ghost say this outlet right here is burnt out. You can't see it. There has not been an explosion or anything, but you need to call somebody. You get the calling people, the maintenance person come, and by the time they take the burnt out outlet out of the wall, it's melted and burnt, and you didn't smell nothing. You didn't see anything, but danger was present. Hallelujah. Danger was present. I'm talking about that's the Holy Ghost. I'm not talking about that quake, quaking. I'm not talking about that because some of y'all got a quaking and you got all of that and you still don't sense the presence of the Lord. You still don't sense when danger is there. You know, you, you still don't, you still don't, but I got a reason to praise the Lord today. I love God with all of my heart and with all of my soul. And I'm learning to love him more and more and more and more. And when the Bible says pray for all saints everywhere, please obey the Lord. Cause you never know what thing you are counteracting in the spirit. You never know what thing you are doing, what operation, what plan, what danger you are shutting down in the spirit. So when people come to mind, when I come to mind, when my daughter come to mind, when people that you haven't seen or heard or thought about in a long time, when they come to mind, that's why I always ask you to come in here with your anointing oil and anoint yourself with oil. Anoint yourself with oil. Now, look, I can't be flattening out my little curls. Y'all see, I'm trying to do something with this brown girl hair. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I can't be doing all that right there. Davis, act right now. Act, act right. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I thank God today for him being who he is. Okay, come on, little hair. Act right. So um, pray for me. Pray for your environment in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for being good to us. We thank you for seeing. Thank you. We acknowledge you that you are the God, that your eyes are upon the righteous and your ears are open unto our cry. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus that Psalm 23 is for real. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but I will feel no evil because God is with me, because you are with me. When you come on here, we're not coming on here to try to do any pretense. So we're not, ain't none of that spooky stuff. You got to learn how to walk in the spirit. You got to learn how to discern the Lord. You got to keep a prayerful, sensitive spirit. I've been in the presence of sickness. Come on, let's pray. You pray, Father, in Jesus' name, let your kingdom come in my life. Let your will be done. That even when I'm in the presence of sickness, I'm in the presence of disease, I'm in the presence of danger. Father, I thank you and I rely on your word. You said that I won't take up any deadly thing. You said, oh God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, that I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. And you said, Lord God, that I can cast out devils and you don't have to hear the devils howling. You don't have to, you don't have, they don't have to be talking to you for the devil to go. My God, today, stop being religious and lost. 
Stop being, stop that. Stop that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There are some, there are some climates that you can be in where they don't scream and they don't shout. They just call the devil out. They just, they don't, they don't talk above how I'm talking right now. They just with authority tell the devil he has to go and he has to go. Praise the name of Jesus. So we thank you, Lord, today in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, Lord, that you are real. You're more real than Hollywood, these horror flicks and all these things that make you think that the only time that you're going to see the devil is that it's got five heads and it's all this stuff going on. Even without a manifestation of a devil or a demon, you still have authority over him. Hallelujah. Even without his antics and even without him going on and the devil going on and the demon and the spirit going on, you still have authority over and then we thank you lord god that you are not uh uh that you are not you will not have us to be ignorant the father we thank you that these are your people today that are watching lord god those that are watching live i thank you right now that you are real and you're going to show yourself strong on their behalf father those that are watching lord god and will watch the replay i thank you for causing your presence and your spirit to be real in their lives father they want to sense you they want to feel you they want to know you they want to see you and father i thank you for some testimony that let them know little or big that the God we serve is real in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. If you believe it, put Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Put Jesus is real. Hallelujah. Amen. Put Jesus is real. Amen. Put Jesus is real. Amen. Jesus is real. Hallelujah. The God I serve is real. Thank you for your angels being real. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. There seems like there's a, a, a longer, 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 longer delay um, on this side, but I'm going to praise the name of the Lord and I'm gonna be looking for your comments that we're on the same page in this thing tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus is, he's real. Amen. Thank you. He is real. We have been in a series and um, um, as I have been sensing the presence of the Lord and listening for the spirit of the Lord, He's been talking to me about his people walking in, um, people walking in obedience, uh, walking in obedience and, um, really understanding why Isaiah 43, how you doing sister Carolyn? Good to see you tonight. Um, why it was necessary, uh, that the prophet, the prophet Isaiah go and prophesy to the people, um, and talk to them about, uh, behold, I will do a new thing that the Lord will do a new thing. It's imperative that God does a new thing, but a new thing that God is doing is not necessarily according to, um, you know, they were in a place of sin. They were in a place of separation. And so the amount of deliverance that was needed for them, um, God wanted to show them he wanted to say to them, hey, forget the formal thing, the former things that I have done. Forget the former things that I have done. Um, he says that I'm going to do a new thing. And he began to talk to them about the new thing that he was going to do. Uh, there were many kings that was in the land during that time that Isaiah uh, was the Lord's mouthpiece. There were many kings that were there doing the wrong thing. And Isaiah went in and set up uh, uh, his self like a flint because God told him, hey, this is a stubborn, it's a stiff-necked people, so set your face like a flint. And so that's what he did. So for ages and for decades, he went and he was among the people and he carried out the will of the Lord by prophesying, by declaring, by dec decreeing, and by always talking to uh, the people of God, the heart of God, so that they will see, no thirst, um, desire of uh, the great things that God has in store for them. We're going to be looking at a couple of scriptures. And as we pray, I want to encourage you um, during this time tonight and any time that we spend together, take these scriptures in your time of prayer, in your time of prayer, because it's not by happenstance. It is definitely, definitely divinely 
that we have our time together um, to build us up and to mature in the Lord, to mature in God, to mature in God. It's just not okay to pray. I taught you at one point that uh, prayer is not only what you say, but it's how you think. Prayer is how you think. And so when you are a sanctuary of prayer, it's not you pausing. It's not you pausing to say a prayer. Your life is a living testimony. Your heart is um, what the word says. Uh, Present yourself therefore unto the Lord. A living sacrifice. You are a living sacrifice. You don't have to pause to engage the presence. You are in nonstop fellowship with the Lord. And this life we live requires us to be disciplined, to be sensitive in the spirit so that we can we can sense him in our atmosphere. So we can sense his movement in our atmosphere. So we can sense what to pray for and how to pray. People become um, very insensitive, Rotisha, about the presence of the Lord because of uh, the system, this world system that we live in. Um, and so to be obedient to the Lord, to sense what he is saying and to hear what he's saying and to experience what the Lord um, is saying um, gives us to know um, something in the mind of of God that was given to us in first John chapter number two, verse 16. And I'm going to read it to you. So if you're taking notes on today, uh, I want you to not, uh, miss this, uh, scripture right here. First John, first John, it's not John one It's first John. I just pasted it like that. And that's how it came out. So first John, um, 2 and 16 says this, for all that is in the world, come on students, all that is in the world, all that is in the world is the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Listen, let me read it again. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of of life. Listen, for all that is in the world, in other words, not this world that you put your feet on, not the dirt, not the globe. He was, when he was saying all that is in the world, he wasn't saying all that is in the globe. What he was saying was, he says, the influences of this world is the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He says, it is not of the Father, but it is the world. It is This is not the influences of the Father, but these influences are, are in the elements where you live. Let me teach you. The Bible says, for all that is in the world, this place that is full of influences, this atmosphere we live in, he said it's full of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are the influences of the world. Got it? The influences, these, the, these things, these influences make up the systems where we live, where we abide in planet Earth. But he says, he's warning you. He's saying, these things are not of the Father. Um, if you can remember from Sunday school or perhaps Bible study, uh, um, um, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 taught us about the God of this world. Listen, taught us about the God of this world. And I know there's a lot going on right now, but listen, um, Jesus always called his disciples little children. He would say, listen, little children. He would teach them. Jesus spent more time teaching, imparting, instructing. He spent more time with the with 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 um, those that follow him, imparting wisdom more than he did performing miracles. So at any given time, you would find him posted up somewhere having a classroom. 
So he was teaching them. So he's teaching them. And so from first, um, some, so we find in second Corinthians four and four, he talks to them about the God of this world. He talks to them about the influences of this world that you are blinded by the God of this world. And so um, we began to teach the gospel and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the disciples and the apostles came along talking to the people to break the influences that people lived under. Listen, to break the influences that people lived under so that they would be talking to them with a verbiage, with a language, with a speech um, that was different than what they were used to. So when you hear or see somebody, when you recognize somebody different, you, they have a sound, they have a verbiage, they have a vernacular that is different than what you were used to. And so you have the apostles and the disciples coming to village from village, talking to the people, saying to them, hey, have you been converted? Have you repented? Have, have, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe and, and began to talk to them about the influences of the world? Um, began to talk to them because people will say the devil is the devil and you look at twisted uh, people, you know, how the de demoniacs act, you, you know something when you see its physical form. But listen, let me teach you tonight as you go into your prayer closet and as you spend time with the Lord, understand that, that, that in that process, those that do not see demons, those that have not seen formalities of evil, it, just because you don't see the formalities of evil, I want you to understand that the influences of the world are meant to blind you, um, meant to work within the members of your natural man so that you can operate in a way so that the enemy can operate in a way. Remember, um, Eve was deceived. Adam was disobedient, but Eve was deceived, right? The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. I'm going to leave that up there for just a moment as I teach this foundation. So in our time of prayer, um, um, and so I want, I want to let you know that this message was not to the world. The message that this was being taught to was to those that have come to believe. Those with a gospel message had already been preached to. Listen to me, church member. Listen to me, those of you who your grandmothers were evangelists. Listen to me who your moms and your fathers are pastors and leaders and teachers and elders and deacons. Listen to me. The message was being taught to those that are in early conversion. Those that were, um, had, 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 had heard of Jesus Christ. Those that have heard him, but not have been, um, totally, uh, 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 I guess mature, I guess is a better word that we can say into knowing and seeing those tricks and traps and schemes of the enemy. He's still the same. Um, nothing has changed about um, the enemy. He's still a trickster. His ways, the world is still the world. The influence is still what they are. And so we must hand down, we must teach, we must revive. This is where you get the spoon. I don't know about you, but when I was younger and I was in the kitchen, my mom would say to me, stir that pot while you up. Why you up and in the kitchen, stir that pot, stir that pot. Why? Because you need the seasoning that has rested on top from the lid being on. You need that seasoning to go down into those beans. You need, you need stuff that's, you know, that was in the ham, was in the smoked neck bones. You need that seasoning that was floating on the top. You, you know, you get, get that spoon and you go down and you stir the pot. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Justina, in the Bahamas, right? So we're talking about the Bahamas. I just automatically thought about, talk, thought about Caribbean cooking. So, you know, those oxtails need to be stirred. So you get your spoon and you go down in the bottom of the pan where it is thickening and you stir it up. And so tonight we're going to stir this pot up. So that you don't, uh, so that you don't forget or think that you are invincible against the influences of this world. Um, and you don't think so? I'm, I'm going to show you how the enemy is crafty, 
how he can use the lust of the the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes and the pride of the light, the pride of life to influence you and to keep you. God bless you, Sister Plowden. Good to see you. Our prayers for uh, your husband. We trust that all is well with you. Thank you for joining us on tonight. So let's talk about those that lust, that lust. Because when we begin to talk about lust, Sister Plowden, thank you for coming. When we begin to talk about lust, we begin to think about, um, we begin to think about uh, uh, lascivious. We begin to think about girls who have their cleavage out. And if you're doing that, stop it. Uh, we begin to think about uh, a man lusting over a woman. Or you begin to think about dramatized stuff that uh, 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 that are visual, um, notable. That's something that you know. That's what that's what the people did. That's what the Pharisees did to Jesus. Things that were notable. This woman caught in the act of adultery. Um, you begin to bring things like that. So those of us that are believers, it is easy for you to look at an unbeliever and call him an unbeliever because of some obvious actions. But there are some things that are happening right among us as believers. And you don't think that you're in a place of rebellion. You don't think that you're in a place of not trusting God because you have named yourself, titled yourself. You're among those. You are doing those things that uh, religious people do. And so because you have counted yourself as such, the actions, the influences has settled into our families. That's why our families sometimes can't change. Some, that's why generational curses are not broken as hard as you pray, as hard as you eat, shine, die, as, long, as hard as you uh, walk through your house slinging oil. The influences of the world are within your members. And if you are not vigilant, careful, prayerful, sensitive, connected to the heart of God through his word, stirring this pot in your life, then it's possible that you will miss some turns of God, some promotions, some, uh, some, some um, uh, vital relationship changes that need to happen in your life with God and in your life with each other, because you were, you have said, oh, the I'm not lusting. So let us deal with what 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 that is um uh, what that means all right so so um these influences get into your decision right they they get they get into your they get into your your decisions lust is not always vicious lust is not always lascivious um in nature but yet they are still alluring so i don't want to keep saying the word lust and you get to thinking that it means uh, something sexual, uh, but I want to talk to you that uh, um, um, ab about lust being an urge, if you will. Um, that lust um, shows up in in your desire to flex. Let's bring it modern day. Um, you you want to flex? You want to show off? You want to? Uh, in my day, you know, when I was coming up, I guess I'm showing my age now, you know, you want to appear to be somebody you not social media has made that so very obvious. Uh, we have filters on our cameras. We have all kind of stuff where we can edit things and listen, let me tell you this. So you have now in this age where you, 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 you're showing off these things to give an influence or a presentation about your life that is not true. It's not true. So you think that God accepts you because you got 50 likes on your picture. It does not mean that God accepts you. It does not mean that you have pleased God because there has been a social acceptance. Come on, let's keep it made the main thing, the main things. Let's 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 keep the main thing the main thing. I love that sister sister Plowden say he's not playing with us. Indeed, he is not playing with us. And so you please God through obedience. 
Um, these influences of the world, come on, let's stay in the book. Let's stay in the book. The influences of the world, your these influences in life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh that drives us, motivates us, that gives us the ambitions, even though that, you know, you, it wasn't nothing wrong with you going out for your next position. It was nothing wrong for, um, with you, um, getting a big ministry. It was nothing wrong with you getting a big following, but the motivation behind you doing that sometimes is social acceptance, but you're not ready to be fretful over a few things. You are not mature enough to handle the responsibility and the accountability that comes along with big things. Come on, let's talk about it. It's not just the big things. It's not just the grandiose things. It's not just those things that seem to be large that cripple us or handicap us or that cause us to be tripped up. Um, the lust of the flesh. You want it now. You want it now. One of the favorite, one of my favorite scriptures as I've matured in God has become uh, uh, um, Ecclesiastes chapter three, where God talks about, or or or, or, or Solomon talks about in, in um, talks about it in Ecclesiastes chapter three. He says, "All things." become beautiful in its time. So uh, it was very funny to me, like how little kids have big heads when they are little, like when they're, they're, when they're like round between three and five or two to six, like they have these big heads that, you know, it's like, it looked like a little, it looked like a blow pop on a popsicle stick or, or a little, a little stick or whatever the case may be. It's because in their range of growth, they have not become beautiful in their season. And then over time, the body begins to fill in. Over time, their voice is not so screechy. And then their little voice catches up with their bodies and catches up with their vocal cords and things begin to develop. And I was at the doctor um, earlier in the week and she was asking me how Genesis was. And Genesis will be turning um, 20 years old this, this year. And so she says, she says she's turning 20, but the settled age um, doesn't really come in to maturity and to focus till around 26 years old. So while you might be, it might be legal for you to smoke and get in the club and your judgment is still very off. You think you've grown. I'm not saying that this is how Genesis thinks, but the average 20 to 21 year old, you think that you've grown. You think that things are alluring. You think that you have the ID to get it so you can go and get it and do what you want to. But listen, let me talk to you and let me tell you that all things become beautiful in its season. And, 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 and no matter how old you are, you may not be ready for marriage. No matter what your birth certificate says, you may not be ready for marriage. You may not, no matter what Netflix say, no matter what Amazon say, there's no, you know, these movies and, um, uh, uh, shows of the times that we are in, uh, about when you lose your virginity and, and, and how you cope with life and all these things that we get from public platforms. Listen, the Bible is telling you and teaching you that there is a urge in you to do these things and the influences of the world are made and generate, generated purposely for that everybody want to be beautiful. So there is some product uh, available to help you overlook your flaws. It is your flaws that help you remember you are human. It is your flaws that help you. It is those tendencies within us. I love Paul and he is the greatest preacher mentor of all times because he says through and through in all of his messages, he says, he says this, he says, Hey, uh, I'm account what I've learned as dung that I might win Christ. He says that forget all of these things that I have learned in the natural. He says my weaknesses, I'm going to boast in my weaknesses so that God could be glorified in me. We want to cover up every blemish. We want to appear to be like we are so uh, uh, perfected, but, but that's not what the Bible says. 
That's not the Bible. That's not what the Bible says. Now, the only thing that is perfected in us and beautified us is in us is salvation. Um, it the only thing that is perfected and beautified in us. Listen, pay attention. Thank God for our wigs, weaves, and hair straightening. Thank God for that. Thank God for the lashes, makeup, jewelry, nice clothes, beautiful perfume. Thank God for all of those things. But the bottom line is the Bible says that he beautifies the meek with salvation. None of this stuff that you have on, we thank God for it. We have an appreciation for it, but none of this stuff is going to heaven. None of this stuff is making it before the throne. None of this stuff is impressing God. But there are influences in the world. There are influences. I'm not saying you shouldn't look your best. I'm not saying that you shouldn't feel good about yourself. I'm not saying those things. I'm saying that you cannot put confidence in the influences um, in the natural things. And so I don't get, so I don't get, stuck here i want to tell you simply what i'm saying is that um our the lust that is in us they go off of impulse which are strong sudden urges um david disobeyed god because of a sudden strong urge he saw uh uh bathsheba uh he saw her and then his flesh took over the lust in his flesh took over and he had a strong, sudden urge that ended in him disobeying God. And so the next scripture that I want to um, give to you about um, obeying God and us uh, being um, alert and crucifying these lusts that we have in, in our flesh is uh, Ephesians 2 and 3. The NIV version says all of us capital A-L-L, -L. all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. So here, Paul is saying, talking about a time when, a time when that there ought to be a difference between now that you are converted and transformed. There ought to be a difference between now and when. And if there is not in particular areas of our lives, we have to work with the Holy Spirit. We have to pray. When was the last time you prayed and said, Lord, I have these urges to do certain things that, uh, put me out of your will or cause me to be impatient or cause me to be unkind or cause me to be unwilling. There is something gratifying about uh, these urges that we have on the inside, these cravings to be right, these cravings to be right. It was something that um, the Holy Spirit said to me while I was in prayer and study this week, um, Sister Tashel that uh, pinched me and blessed me at the same time um, about these cravings. I'm going to read another scripture. Um, I'm going to read it to you in the Amplified Version, I believe this is. Ephesians 2 and 3 says, All these, um, all these unbelievers were all once lived, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh our behavior governed by sinful self. It was governed by what? Sinful self. Indulging the desire of a human nature, right? All this, all this, he says, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit. And the impulses of the sinful mind. So you got random stuff that come to your mind. You got random impulses that come to your body, come to your mind. You see things and suddenly you want something. You, you smell it and suddenly you want it. You think about it and then you want to 
do it. And I said, I said to you earlier, it's not necessarily sexual stuff. So let's throw that out. It's not necessarily sexual. All lust is not associated with sexual pleasure and sexual desire. Not all lust. You can have a lust to do great and to be great, but your motivation in which you do it be according to the influences of the world, not driven by God, not led by the Holy Spirit, but they validate you as um, um, a person by what you say, what you hear, what you taste, what you sense, all of the senses, right? And so we have to be at a place that when we have our relationship with God, that we are sensitive not to conduct our lives uh, with those things. So um, not to waste time or not to take too much time getting through this. I want to take my time, but I want to hurry up at the same time. Um, there are some things that the Lord talked to me about, and there are some things that he spoke to me about. And these are some things that I want to um, say to you. I want to um, I want to I want to get those out right fast. I want to get those out right fat, fast, right? Uh, let's talk about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? Um, that those things uh, cause us to bear a consequence in our actions. Listen, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life causes us to bear a consequence in our decision. Listen. Um, you are looking at the consequences of your decisions, who you married, where you work, uh, the children that you had, consequences or rewards. They're either rewards or it's a consequence. Oh, it's deep right here. I say it pinched me and it blessed me at the same time. Listen, it is through sometimes your desire to be married. Where we get married, we get married where you are. So if you chose a spouse based on when you was broken and you mad at said spouse now because you chose said spouse when you were broken, now the lust of your flesh is to be angry now that you are in God. You think that now that you're in God or that you are a little bit more mature, sometimes the consequence of your decision Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, right? The pride of life. You chose somebody based on where you are, their status, their position. You married them because you was a preacher. There was so many preacher friends of mine that can tell you, you married the prophet, you married the preacher, but you didn't marry their purpose. Mm. You wanted the title, you wanted the limelight, but you didn't want the, the discipline, you didn't want the consecration. You didn't want the sacrifice. You didn't want the discipline. Come on. We're talking about the lust of the flesh. We're talking about the lust of the eyes. And we're talking about the pride of life. Don't be tricked. You wanted the position, but you didn't know the position was going to cause stress on your family. You didn't know that, 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 that you weren't ready for that level of responsibility. But because you got a degree, because your friends, you are in a circle of people who are driven, you are in some A-list friends, you are in some A-list, uh, A type A personality people, and you are driven to things that you are possibly not ready for. So these are the notes that I made. made. So, 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 so now you are at a place uh, uh, to where uh, you made a decision. You wanted the house, you, 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 you wanted the family, all of those things you made possibly outside of the influences of God. You made them according to the flesh, according to the lust of the eyes, and according to the pride of life. This flesh will make you be in a hurry to pick something or to choose something. If you made any of those decisions in God, they were they are rewards. They are not consequences. So today, if I'm talking to you and you're on the verge of 
of living unemotional, um, living emotionally unbalanced. It is time for you to get your whole self in order. Get your calm your flesh down, calm your spirit down. Say to the influences of the world, this is why possibly you have to stop listening to secular music for a season. Possibly you have to stop looking at secular movies for a season. Possibly you have to disconnect yourself from certain people because those people, they um, cause those things in you to become stronger, those urges to become stronger. I'm not talking about sex. Remember, I'm, I'm not talking about sex. I'm, I'm talking about urges urges somebody run out and do something now you want to run out and do something somebody uh get something now you want to go out and get something you know someone is having a certain experience now you want to have that certain experience not not following the will of god um not following the will of god you are vocational preacher but preachers on the circuit saying that you have to be in full-time ministry for you to be considered anybody you better leave them people alone and you better stay where god plants you until he opens up a door or does something because those people who are on getting their income and being provided for or they're obeying god then that's their faith and their favor at work you got to make sure that you do not define your life that you do not define your life i love couples who say oh we're not it's our choice that we don't have children i love couples who say it is our choice that we don't have children i love people who say it is my choice that i'm not getting married i love people who say bump with the influences of my family the influences of my world up. How you doing, Pastor David? Good to see you. That I bump all of that. I, I told y'all that I was I, I was asking y'all one time before, is it is it safe for the preachers to say bump? I don't have a I that's a borderline for me. I, I don't want to be offensive. I don't want to be offensive to anybody, but I really mean what I'm saying. Shut down the influences. You might, you know. The Bible says, come out from among them and be separated. You might have to be separated from some nice people for a season of your life so that you won't be imprisoned or thinking something is wrong with you because the, the senses of your body, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. The pride of life has pushed you into all those degrees you have. The pride of life has caused you to say, oh, I don't want to pass it without having no wife. I don't want to pass it. I don't want to be in husband, um, ministry without a husband. Why you can't be in ministry without a husband? Jesus was. Paul was. What's wrong with you? What, why, why you got to be hooked up and booed up for you to preach the gospel? If God called you to preach the gospel. Um, um, and no, it don't have to be anything wrong. If your, if your flesh is out of control, Jesus said, listen, if your eyes are offensive, pluck it out. If your hand, uh, 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 is the thief, he said, you know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta do something with the hand. If there is some, a urge within you, I'm calling you to arrest mode tonight. Verify. Why is it that you always have to spend your last money? Is there is a, a lust, there is a lust in you to be broke, a lust in you not to be disciplined. Come on. There is a lust in you to be lazy. Come on. There is a lust in you to do things that's contrary to the will of God for you. Listen and pay attention. So I said to you, the decisions that you make are either a, either a consequence um, or it is a reward. The fruit that you have in your life is either a consequence or it is a reward. We know that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Come on, let's get your Bible. That's Hebrews 11 and 6. Get your Bible. It, he is a rewarder. He is looking to reward those that seek him according to his will for you. Not for you to just randomly make decisions because you have the money or you randomly make these decisions um, to do these things because you can, right? So you must live in a place of conviction. I'm gonna help y'all get free tonight. 
So I talked to y'all about those of you uh, that you have people off your back. Uh, this is where you mind your own business. You minding your own business. This is where the minding my own business ministry come in. You know, if the people did not invite you into that situation, leave the people alone about their marital status, right? Leave the people. If these folks single and they want to be single, y'all married people, take these single people out of bondage. If they not, uh, I, you know, I, I feel the church mother on me. If they not out here sleeping around or whoring around, that's in the Bible. Don't come for me. If, if, if they're not out here whoring around, if they're not out here committing stuff that is offensive to their influence as a believer, leave them folks alone. There is nothing wrong with being a unmarried believer. Um, 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 and listen, um, there's nothing wrong with you desiring a husband. There's nothing wrong with you desiring a wife. But I'm going to tell you what the Holy Ghost said. He says, some people, they sign up for stuff um, that their heart is not ready to handle. Ah! Shanda. Sebekosadabasha. I was minding my own business and the Holy Ghost dropped that up. Signing up for what you can't walk out. The Bible says, Jesus taught his disciples, he said, count the cost before you sign up, before you build. He said, count, count the cost. And then you bragging about stuff, um, um, you bragging about stuff with your mouth that your heart can't handle. I'm going to give it to you one more time. Signing up for stuff or signing up for or, or things in your life that you can't walk out wifehood, fatherhood, education, home ownership, uh, uh, anything that is related to responsibility or accountability. He told me something about that. So the accountability phase, people are making money, good money offer accountability. And it's titled in this profession, Sister Andrea, there is titled as coaching. A lot of people are making money off of their, uh, uh, um, about their niche. If you have a niche to see progress, if you have a niche to see progress, I have a niche in my own life and I can give you some counsel on how to get some progress and some things i wrote a whole book about it's called the enemies of progress if you don't know that visit my website and i will gladly send one to you if you should order it but this thing about accountability accountability there's a prayer that we pray and there's a scripture one of the elders uh one of you bible students one of you people who just love the word of god i'd appreciate if you found the scripture and put it up there for me um but david said let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight in thy sight my strength and my redeemer when he said let the words of my mouth he was saying let me be accountable let me live up to, let me walk out the things that I say and the things that I can't walk out, the things that I can't be accountable to. Don't let me, don't let me ponder those things in my heart. Don't let me, um, imagine that, imaginate, uh, 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 Im don't let me have the imagination. Don't let me romanticize things in my mind that I can't walk out. How you doing prophet? That's my brother. I love you. Don't let me romanticize. Let me tell you about your Im image nation, your imagination. Your imagination will cause you to be in a world of trouble because your imagination will get you to believe in things that you can't even walk out. If it is a God-given vision, a God-given dream, and if it's a God-given uh, 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 urge, desire, we're talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, uh, oh, y'all out here prophesying, God gonna make my name great. Well, you don't even know the response. I say, God gonna make it great. Because by the time he makes your name great, then he knows also with your name is the credit, is the character, is the uh, humility th that he is going to cause to stand up with whatever your name is. So, so listen and pay attention. 
So he wants you to understand um, that he he will make your name great. And you out here boasting stuff that you can't even walk out. And we're in this place saying that we want people to be accountable. I don't let people roll, roll up on me and say, I want, I want you to mentor me or, or can you help me with my certain goals, my fitness goals or my nutritional goals or my financial goals or my spiritual goals? No. You know why? Because a lot of times what people really want is they want a place uh, 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 um, um, but they really don't, they want a place to talk to someone about these, uh, validating these images or their, these desires or these urges, but true accountability means prophet Brit, you give me permission to call you out when you're not living up to what you said that you wanted. So true accountability causes me to call you out. Uh, when you off your assignment, when you off your diet, when you off your exercise routine, when you off the, those things that you said you wanted. Thank you, Elder Reed, Psalms 19 and 14. Let the words of my heart and the meditation of, let, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer, right? So stop saying you want to be healthy without accountability. Stop saying you want to be wealthy. You want to have financial control, financial gain, financial freedom without accountability. If there was no accountability system set up, then you don't want that. How you doing, Lady Ali? Good to see you on tonight. Stop saying these things and you don't want accountability. I don't want to have any friend, any business partner. I don't want to have any spiritual brother or sister or prayer partner who, who I'm telling and downloading all this stuff to and they can't call me out. And then us as saints, you get mad when the people call you out, you get offended. That is not accountability. Right. So the Bible says I need another elder on top of this. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. So 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 automatically, if I want to see change, if I'm going to chop through, uh, 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 if I if I got a, I ain't going to have a muffin top ministry. If you if, if I'm saying that I'm not going to be broke, then I got to have somebody that has some some, some, some tenacity. I got to have somebody that has, uh, some depth and some weight. If I say I ain't going to have a muffin top ministry, I got to have somebody who is going to make me accountable to the muffins. <laughs> right now that's the Fitbit. Amen. So listen, and pay close attention. You saying that you want to be accountable. And so we quote that irons, sharpen irons, right? And so as a result of the iron sharpening you, you gotta you that means that there is a difference before. That means there's that that my blade was not sharp enough to cut through some areas, but hanging out with you cause a consciousness to emerge in me that changes my behavior. Hanging out with you, talking to you, praying with you, working out with you, uh, conversing with you, um, cause something about me to be different. Hell to read on top of her game tonight. Proverbs 27 and 17 says this. So if you're saying that you want to be sharper in the word and you want to you want to grow in the word, you can't you can't hang out with people who don't know the word, not living the word, not studying the word. You can't hang out if you hang out with people who spend. Listen, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. If you hang out with people who that one nickel is burning a hole in their pocket, you can not hang out with me. You cannot hang out with me because I don't spend my money every time I get an urge to spend some money. Now, I am at a place that if there is something that I wanted, I can go get it. But I do have a system set up in my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. That, that when it comes to certain things and certain numbers in my account, I, I, I have a character about how I live, right? What I say I want, I can't spend according to the things that I say that I want and I had, don't have those things. 
I'm not going to be walking around here swinging something and there is a character lacking in my life some, somewhere else. It just, just done, does not line up. So stop saying you want those things without accountability. Right? Right. So I said to you that lust is not always vicious or lascivious in nature, yet it is alluring. So, 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 um, so, um, so let's talk about this. So how are you saying that you want to be healthy, but you don't go to bed? How are you saying that you want to be financially wealthy, but you don't attend those uh, seminars? How is it that you, you want to be stronger in your faith? Cause faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Um, um, how is it that you want these different results, but there is no actions, right? You can't do it. So it's arrogance, it's pride, um, it's taking an opportunity for granted that tomorrow will always be there. Pride will make you be fooled. Pride, pride will make you take people for granted. Pride will make you think that um, that that person forgave you, but that don't mean that that person wants you in their circle. The person is not holding a grudge. The person has forgiven you, but you treated them some, them some type of way, but that doesn't mean that that person is willing to lend you their gifting anymore. That doesn't, be, that doesn't believe, um, they forgave you for wrecking their car, but that doesn't mean that they're going to give you the keys. Um, um, it doesn't mean that that person has now uh, uh, giving you the trust and an entryway back into their life, back into their emotions. And when you operate in pride, you think that you, you are a handsome guy or that you are, a a a a a a a a a guy with good status or, or, or you have this certain, you drive this certain car and you know, it's whatever this come along with you. You think that, um, that your stuff, it's going to attract this woman. Um, but listen, um, whatever attracts a woman don't necessarily keep the woman. So your pride and your stuff, um, it's, it's yeah, she's going to look probably. She's probably going to check you out, check out your accent, accents or ac assets. But it doesn't mean that you have chemistry. It doesn't mean that you're a likable person. It doesn't mean that she can foresee Waking up to you, dude, when you, you know, you know, 60, 70 years old. Listen, that's her prerogative, right? So we get to choose as well. So the pride of life, right? You, your pride make you put off your projects, your assignments, your books, your um, ventures, your, your, your rest. Because uh, you think that it's always going to be there. You think, I mean, let us go to the ant. The ant does not put off anything till tomorrow. The ant is a very diligent creature. So your pride will, will um, be, we think that pride limits us to being stubborn, but pride makes us take people for granted. Pride makes us take God for granted. Uh, uh, the Lord says, the Bible says, seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him where he is near. That's Isaiah 55, right? He said, call upon him while, while he is near. He said, let the, let the wicked man uh, forsake his ways. So, so, so listen, it, listen, he's giving you time. He's giving you time at this, at this point and at this juncture in this dimension, but it doesn't mean that any of us are going to wake up and see tomorrow. Listen, don't let your pride. Uh, put you in a position that you can't get out of, right? So, 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 listen. Um, um, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the time, right? I'm looking at the time. Um, the main, my main, um, my main assignment tonight was to get you to examine, um, examine the scriptures, right? Are you truly in relationship with God to the degree of you being sensitive to walk out um, um, Galatians 5, Galatians 5, Galatians 5 and 16 says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And I've been saying this whole time that we spent tonight together, I've been saying to you this whole night that um, lust is not necessarily associated with sexual things it is urges it urges it is sudden 
um, things that pull you away, distract you, or there are um, some things that might be legitimate, like your desires to be promoted or to be in leadership, uh, both natural and spiritual. Um, but you're not ready. Jesus, but, but Jesus said this. Um, he said this. He said, um, when, when, when he was asked, who going to sit on your left and on your right? And he said, you know, he talked to the, to, to the apostles about, um, you know, can you, can you stand to be baptized with suffering? Oh my God. Can you, can you take the fall or the blame? Can you, I heard a quote the other day that had me mesmerized, uh, the the quote was by Jordan Peterson and he said um you know he was like he was like he was like this is what Jesus did he took up his suffering he tied it to himself and then he walked up a hill so any of the things that you're saying that you want a family a husband a wife a successful career and all of that will come some level of sacrifice and suffering. Please don't think that you are going to skate through life. So you had a bad childhood. If you talk to most people, most people would say that they, some people say they had a great childhood, but in every life, there is some tribulation in every life. There is a struggle in every life. There are situations that knock the wind out of us. If you hadn't hit you yet, hold on, it's coming. In everybody's life, there has been some suffering, but that is not the place where you get to lay down in the middle of the street and quit. You don't get to quit. You don't get to throw in the towel. You don't get to uh, 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 um, say you're not good enough. You, you don't get to do that. You don't get to say, I messed up too bad. You don't get to say that. What you get to do is take your suffering when you walk in the spirit, not fulfilling the lust of the flesh, to quit, to throw in the towel. That's a lust as well. When, when you get the urge, right? Galatians 6, right? Um, don't be weary in well-doing, right? Six and nine. Don't be weary in well-doing, but you will reap if you faint not. Faint not. I'm not saying you're not going to have the urge to faint. I'm not going to say that you're not going to have a temptation to faint. I'm not going to tell you that you're, that, that it's going to, it's not going to be heavy. I'm saying to you what the Bible says, that you bind up, your suffering, and you carry it up the hill where God has ordained for your life. We're talking about being obedient. We're talking about living the life that God called you to live. We're talking about living a life that is pleasing and having a relationship that is pleasing to God. Listen to me. Listen to me. Lady Nidra, Sister Tasha, Sister Carolyn, Sister Andrea, listen to me. Listen to me. When God calls you, he calls you, call, C-A-L-L-S. He calls, my southern draw. He calls you, and when he calls you, he places upon you in seasons of your life the maturity for you to be stripped down to nothing, made again, walk in humility, relying on him. And this is what our lives are like without the influences of the world, which takes us back to Proverbs 3. And I'm telling you what I've been saying to you for sessions now. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't acknowledge these lusts that are in your flesh because you have tendencies to follow urges, lean out to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge God and he will direct 
your path. It's going to be seasons of your life that you need more than money. It's going to be seasons of your life that you need wisdom. It's going to be seasons of your life that you have wisdom, but you need money. It's going to be seasons in your life that, that you have both wisdom and money, but you need direction. Listen to me. Pay attention. You're going to have times in your life to where you need to be relying and leaning completely and totally on God. And that's what he looks for, for you to be obedient. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. But when you acknowledge the Lord, that is not uh, something that you do um, as a robot. You have to have a relationship for that. Acknowledge the Lord. Look in his direction. Put an ear out to what, for what he's saying. Have a sensitivity for what's on his heart. Um, you could be going and going and going and going and ready and ready and ready. And the Lord says, it's not your season. I don't care how many applications you put in. He said, not now. He said, not yet. And you are going to have to have a maturity in you to obey what God said. Which takes us back to 1 Samuel 15 and 23. When the Lord said to Israel, you don't need a king. You got me. And you had somebody who was the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You had King Saul on his first assignment, disobey God. Disobey God. Proving to the Lord why he should be rejected. Because he wasn't going to be somebody who acknowledged the Lord and all his ways. He was not going to be someone walking in humility. He was not going to be someone that God could rely on. Status and all of that kind of stuff. So the playing fields are level. The Holy Spirit is at work in our lives through this word and you will never be the same. Father, I thank you that every time we bow in our silence and our time of meditation and our time of prayer and our time of sleep and our time of rest and our time of exercise, recreation, I thank you right now, Lord, that the heart of this word will minister to us over and over and over. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that it will cause us not to sin against you, that it will cause us, Lord God, to truly know your desire for us. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, that you are delivering us where we need to be delivered and you're setting us free from those things that have us tied up and bounded, Lord God, to the influences of this world. Father, we thank you for giving us a truth and a liberty we've never known before. In Jesus' name, amen. If you receive that, put an amen up on the screen. Come on, put an amen. Amen. This is freedom right here. Mm -hmm. This is freedom. This is freedom. This is freedom. Freedom, freedom, freedom. Freedom. Amen. 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 This is liberty. This is freedom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is freedom that you don't have to worry about what people are going to say before you make your next decision. That you don't have to worry about who's going to be watching you when you make your next decision. That you can live liberty without the influences of what people think. Ah, ah, y'all worried about what people think about your car, whether it's a beater or, or, or you trying to, you trying to drive something that you don't have grace to drive. You better forget these people. I told y'all I have a, I have a problem with that word bump, bump these people. <laughs> Do not be out here in bondage over these people. 
they business raggedy and they're trying to be up all up on your business. Why are you all up on me? Why are you all up on me? Mind your business. Don't worry about what's going on over here. Don't be in bondage in where you live. You better live somewhere um, that you can fulfill your goals until the Lord say otherwise. Amen. You better be single until God say otherwise. Amen. You better love you. You better take your eyes off of somebody else's marriage and put your eyes on your own husband. Girl, I wouldn't be doing that. I, I, I wouldn't be doing that. Well, maybe that's why you don't have a man. I'm talking about what you won't be doing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Get free. You telling your boys what you won't do for your wife. Oh, man, if I was her, man, if I was her, if I was you, I wouldn't be doing nothing for her. That's probably why you don't have no woman. I can't keep a woman because you listening to the influence of somebody who worldly. <laughs> Woo, huh? Come on in here, Holy Ghost. You better sit down and let the Lord teach you how to keep your man. You better sit down and let the Lord teach you how to keep your husband. You better sit down and let the Lord teach you how to be joyful as a single person and not out here thirsting for what don't belong to you. Amen. Glory to God. You thought coronavirus was something you'll like you'll get you'll out, you'll get something that you can't get rid of. Out here fooling around with the masses. Amen. The church mother in me done rose up again. I love y'all. If you care to get one of my books or uh, patronize the ministry with one of the products that is available on natashadavis.org, you could do so. Um, if you care to sow into the ministry tonight by planting the seed, you could do so by going to my cash app. The handle is Natasha N. Davis. And um, you could give securely by any means on natashadavis.org. Um, listen, listen, don't go off so fast. There will be a fast next month. And I will be posting that information uh, over the weekend. Listen to me. Uh, we came off of the Daniels. Um, we came off of the 40-day consecration on April the 1st. So this is the remaining part of April that you have not, maybe, maybe, have not been consecrating. Um, but we will begin. We we together, corporately, fast, corporately, at least once a month. So we want to do that. And so let just please know that that is out there. And there's some other great things from Natasha Davis Ministries coming in your direction that's going to do nothing but bless you real good. All right. I'll see y'all on Sunday. Love you. See you soon.